Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to make a turtle clay whistle. You start with two balls of clay and you're going to start uh, pinching them open using the pinch method which involves sticking your thumb in and then slowly pushing it out to create a small cup. Uh, you do this with one side and you're going to do the same on the other side. Um, you try to smooth out um, and make sure there's no there's no cracks especially on the the edge of the shape. Um, that's the most important part. Um, don't apply too much water. Just make sure that all little cracks are smoothed out um, and try to get it to the shape that you like. You're going to have to make the same, almost the same size shape uh, with the next ball of clay. So then you start doing the same, pinching it open, making sure there's no cracks on the edges and you get it to the desired size and shape because the idea is you're going to stick them together and uh, in order to to stick two pieces of clay together you first have to open the surface with uh, an object like a knife, it could be like a sharp stick, it could be a needle and what you're doing is creating more surface area you do it on both sides and then you're going to apply a little bit of water. Really depends on the clay that you're using. If the clay tends to get very wet very quickly, then don't use too much water. If the clay is very dry, you might need more water. Um, so you just apply a little bit of water on each side. Honestly, if the clay were a little wetter, I wouldn't even uh, use water. And then it becomes a lot more stickier a lot stickier. You attach it and this process you have to be a little careful you don't squish it too much. You're kind of joining those two sides together and um, making sure that that crease disappears. But you don't want to force it. It's um, What I do is I use both thumbs and I kind of squish those two sides together or in that case I used my thumb and index finger and I smooth it out on top so it becomes one hollow ball which is going to be the the shape we use for the body of your uh, turtle clay whistle. So once I have the ball, it doesn't have to be a perfect ball, I kind of want to shape it into um, the body of the turtle which includes the shell and then the base. So what I'm doing is I'm rolling one side of it so it resembles more of like a round shell. This is more like a tortoise than a turtle, I have to say. Um, and I kind of do that until I'm happy with uh, the shape of the turtle. You can also do this with a, a palette, with a a wooden tool that you can kind of smack it with. Again, if you do that, just make sure the clay isn't too soft. But I found that just by rolling it on the table, I got to the shape I wanted. Then I'm going to attach the head. And this is important because the head is the mouthpiece for the whistle. You're going to blow into the head to make the whistle uh, work. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that the head is aligned with the base of the turtle. Here I'm indicating a 90 degree angle. So the base is already flattened, or I'm, I'm kind of doing that now. And then I'm also creating a base on one side where I'm going to attach the head. And that 90 degree angle is important for us to create a, a whistle. This is a tutorial for beginners because once you know how to create a whistle and you have some more practice with this, you can do it pretty much with any shape but in the beginning it's, it gets a little tricky so this is where I'm going to attach the head notice that again it's aligned with the base it's not at the top of the shell and then to attach it I'm going to use the same method which is to get the knife or a sharp tool and, um, and score the clay on the turtle body and the turtle head I made some 
a few final touches to the shape of the shell. You can obviously make more changes later, but when you're making a whistle, you should keep in mind that once the whistle works, you don't want to mess around with it too much because um, it can stop working and it's a pain. So you try to get things into the ideal shape um, as early as possible. This is true for any ceramic piece. The more perfectionist you are in the beginning, the, the more perfectionist the, the final piece will turn out. Sorry if that English was bad. <laughs> so there I, I scored the two sides. I attached it with a little bit of water. I'm combining the two uh, clay pieces so they join. And what I'm doing just to ensure the head doesn't fall off at some point, which would be a shame. I'm making a small coil and I'm wrapping it around the head and again smoothing that in so it all becomes one piece of clay. The coil, I didn't score and add water in this case because the clay I was using was still moist enough where I knew I could combine it. If you're working with wetter clay, you should also not wet that more. If you're working with slightly drier clay, you may want to score it, uh, add a little bit of water. If the clay you're using is too dry, I would try to soften it up before I work with it. So here I'm, you know, cleaning up the edges. You can do this with your fingers. You don't need any special tools for, for a lot of this type of work. So in, in this shot, I'm trying to show that the base of the turtle body and the head is at an angle. And what we want is it for, be, for it to be flat. So I start uh, hitting the body against the table, not too hard because you can always um, break the ball. It's a hollow ball. So I'm just flattening it out so that it's all aligned. And this is important for creating the whistle uh, mechanism. So once I'm satisfied with that, I'm also adjusting the head a little bit because again, once I create the whistle, I don't want to mess with this too much. That's going to be the the channel, the mouthpiece where you're going to blow into that's going to activate um, the, the whistle and once you have that channel in place you don't really want to um, squish the head more or you can add things to it, you have to be very careful and since this is a beginner tutorial again it's just better to, to mold everything as close to what you would like in the finished project pro product as possible. So in this one, I'm going to show you close up real quick, but basically the I'm indicating where the wall of clay, like the thickness of the wall of clay um, of the body of the turtle. And the square is the, the whistle mechanism. We're going to open a hole in that square and then we're going to create a channel through the mouthpiece that's going to meet the edge of that, the back edge of that square, and that's what activates the whistle. Obviously, your first attempt at this may not sound incredible, but as you do more and more of these, you'll notice you can get a cleaner sound. There are a few different factors involved to making a clear sounding whistle. One of them is the size of this little window. One of them is how clean the fipple or the edge which activates the whistle sound is uh, as well as the angle another is how clean the mouthpiece channel is um, so in this point I've opened a hole into the hollow part of the turtle body and I'm trying to remove clay on the inside edges um, what I often do is I just squish this clay against the wall on the inside wall of the turtle so I don't have to try to dig it out because often when you dig it out it ends up opening the hole too much. It's better to start with a small hole than too large of a hole. So in this um, shot I'm using a, a flat wooden tool to kind of uh, create a more square-like structure. Again this is an, an essential tool um, the most essential tool is one that I'll bring out in a, in a few moments when I'm finalizing the fipple or the edge of the whistle. 
uh, which is like the back side. That's the tool. Um, I'm going to create another video to show you how to make this. It's super easy. What you want is a, a thin, narrow wooden tool that you can use uh, to create the back edge of that window because that is the edge um, that you're going to blow onto. Basically, you want that edge to be thin and um, at the right angle, at the right height. It needs to be usually at around a 45 degree angle. And it has to be aligned with the mouthpiece channel. All of this sounds really complicated, but um, once you make a couple of them, you realize it's not too complicated. And most of the time, some kind of noise will come out. Maybe it'll be too airy. Maybe it'll be perfect, maybe it'll, you know, um, maybe you need to blow really hard for it to make sound, maybe you don't. So what I did in that last shot was I kind of smoothed that edge out and I, I made a 45 degree angle. I think it's less than that one, maybe 30 degree angle. And um, once it feels right, I don't touch it. You don't want to mess too much with this part of the whistle. Um, especially if the clay is soft, I strongly suggest you don't use very soft clay for this project because um, as soon as you start blowing into the, the whistle to test it, you're going to be wetting all the clay with, with uh, the vapor of your mouth, with your breath. And what that's going to do is soften the edge to the point where it can actually start deforming. So try to do this with leather hard clay, maybe a little softer than leather hard, but not much softer. You'll also find that different clays work better. With clay that where there's too much uh, sand, you, you might notice that the sound isn't as clean. So here I'm creating the mouthpiece channel, which I do carefully. I don't want to do this too many times, ideally just one time, so I align visually align it as well as I can vertically and horizontally as I push it in carefully and in this shot I'm cleaning out the clay that came out so I'm removing the clay that came out as I push the stick through and I'm pushing the stick very carefully in and out not completely you'll notice I don't remove the stick I just kind of push it in and out to push out uh, as much clay as possible from the channel wiping it away with the other tool and um, once I feel that it's, it's clean enough, then I can test it. And so I'm, I'm kind of cleaning out the edge there. You want to make sure you don't cover the channel you just created when you're doing this. But at this point, you have to be super delicate. And here I test it. It's a nice, clear sound which is not always the case, especially in the beginning. You might be testing it a few times, which is when it tends to get wet. Um, but if you've done it, I've had a bit more practice, so you know, if you've done it uh, cleanly and at the right angle, it should sound, make a sound on the first attempt. Here I'm creating the tail. The rest of this video is really about the aesthetics of the turtle. The whistle itself is working. So um, I'm scoring the back of the turtle to put his tail on. I don't know why I decided it's a he. And uh, then I'm going to, all of this again, you can use a coil around the tail if you feel like it's going to be better attached. I felt pretty confident that I could attach it as in the way I'm doing in the video, smoothing out all the little elements. And while you're working on the, the turtle clay whistle, at this stage, you just want to be careful that you're not messing with the whistle. So you're not messing with the head too much, and you're not messing with that little window and that little edge. You don't touch that. You got to be careful. Sometimes you grab it and your finger pushes it in. 
and then it doesn't work anymore. So when you maneuver with the, the turtle clay whistle, then you want to do so gently. So what I did is I created a thick coil, divided it into four parts, which are going to be the little legs. This is um, definitely not very uh, perfectly done. I don't usually work um, in this way. I kind of just, the sound for me is the most important factor when creating a whistle. So while I'm working on the, on the turtle, I'm blowing into it to make sure it's still has the sound that I want and if it sounds like maybe something shifted or moved then I have to in that moment fix the whistle before I continue. The worst is when you've created this incredible looking piece which def is definitely not the case with this <laughs> turtle but you've put a lot of work into the details, the carving, the design, uh, whatever and then the whistle doesn't work. So always make sure to just blow for a little bit in the whistle, not too many times. And um, I'm attaching these legs one by one. You could also kind of just score them all and attach them all, but by doing it one by one, I have enough space around the leg to join the leg to the body. And if I put them all on at once, then I would have to maneuver around the other legs, which is not ideal. I guess I can take this time just to say uh, that I will be uploading other types of videos. Uh, the Aztec Death Whistle is coming up. And you can, of course, speed all these videos up. I just wanted to provide a full-length uh, video for this tutorial for the Turtle Clay Whistle. And then you can always, yeah, speed it up four times if, if you know how to attach legs to a turtle, for instance. Um, I might actually upload another video which shows you a little more close-up of how to make the whistle, what factors to consider. When you're looking at it, it just gets a little tricky in terms of camera proximity and angles. And uh, these make great little gifts for Christmas or um, birthdays, you know, they're handmade, they're cute, they're not perfect. That's the thing about clay. It lends itself a lot to just personality because of the imperfection of it. And that's something that a lot of beginners get frustrated with because it doesn't look perfect. Okay, in this part right here, I'm just going to mention it. I, I noticed that there's kind of a gap between the leg and the body of the turtle, which looked a little weird which also made the leg look weak on the turtle, like it might fall off at some point. So I attached a little coil to fill in that gap. And I think I did that on another section too. So here I tested it again, sounds good. And that's basically the final product right there. Looks like a turtle. I added two little holes, the mouth, channel, the mouthpiece channel is already the turtle's mouth. You're going to see it right now. It looks pretty funny, but also looks pretty cute. It looks like a turtle that's a little surprised about something dismayed. And then here I start marking the scales for the turtle, which because again, I'm not that interested in the aesthetics, I tend to do this part really quickly or not at all. Um, but what you could do is you look online, search for turtle scale pattern or something, and you'll see some different designs come up. And to close, I'd just like to say thanks for watching this tutorial on how to make a turtle clay whistle. And I invite you to watch the other videos I'll be uploading and to visit my website where I'll be offering online courses on how to make ink and whistling vessels and other types of uh, clay instruments. Beep, beep, beep.